since America's founding in 1776. For U.S. presidents have been assassinated while in office. But assassination attempts and plots on White House incumbents are numerous. In fact, there have been at least 17 attempts to murder a president in the country's history. So, who are those that dodged a bullet? And who are those that didn't? Watch this video till the end. You will figure out of the presidents who became targets of assassins. On January 30, 1835, Andrew Jackson, the seventh president of the United States, was leaving the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., when he was confronted by a man aiming a pistol at him, which misfired. The gunman then pulled out another pistol, which also misfired. The would-be assassin was later named as Richard Lawrence, an English-American house painter. Lawrence was ultimately found not guilty by reason of insanity and spent the remainder of his life in insane asylums. He was the first known person to attempt the assassination of a sitting president of the United States. Theodore Roosevelt had a miraculous escape after an assassin's otherwise lethal bullet was impeded by a 50-page campaign speech folded over twice in Roosevelt's breast pocket, and a metal glasses case that deflected the slug, Roosevelt, who had served as the 26th President of the United States, was campaigning in Milwaukee on October 14, 1912. As the Bull Moose candidate for the U.S. presidency, he's pictured greeting supporters. Before the failed assassination attempt, the man who fired the gun was John Flaming Schrank, a Bavarian-born saloon keeper from New York. Schrank had stalked Roosevelt through eight states. In an effort to catch the right moment to kill him, the would-be assassin was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and committed to an institution for the criminally insane where he lived until his death in 1943. William Howard Taft the chosen successor of Theodore Roosevelt and the 27th President of the United States, was meeting the President of Mexico, Porfirio Diaz, when he became the target of an assassin. Taft and Diaz were attending a historic presidential summit in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, on October 16, 1909, the first time an American president had stepped over the U.S.-Mexico border. Lurking among the crowds along the procession route was 52-year-old Julius Bergerson of Minnesota, holding a concealed palm pistol, fortunately. The security personnel spotted Bergerson and quickly disarmed him. The failed assassin was later declared insane and spent the rest of his days in an asylum. A plot to assassinate Herbert Hoover was uncovered in November 1928 as the president-elect embarked on a ten-nation goodwill tour of Central and South America. He's pictured with Chilean President Carlos Ibáez del Campo, a group of Argentine anarchists led by Severino de Giovanni, planned to blow up Hoover's train as it crossed the country's central lowlands. Fortunately, the plot was uncovered before the bombers could place the explosives on the rails. Severino Di Giovanni was later executed by firing squad on February 1, 1931, as an enemy of the state. The attempted assassination of Franklin D. Roosevelt took place on February 15, 1933, some 17 days before Roosevelt's first presidential inauguration. The president-elect was attending a rally at Bayfront Park in Miami when shots rang out. Roosevelt's would-be assassin was Italian immigrant Giuseppe Zangara while he missed his principal target. Zangara did mortally wound Chicago Mayor Anton Chermik and injured for other people. Zangara, pictured in jail reading newspaper accounts of the incident, was found guilty of Cermak's murder and executed in the electric chair on March 20, 1933. On November 1, 1950, to Puerto Rican nationalists, Oscar Colazzo and Griselio Torresola attempted to take the life of Harry S. Truman, 
the 33rd President of the United States. Truman was ensconced in Blair House. While the White House was undergoing major renovations in the attack, Torresola shot to policemen, mortally wounding one of them before being gunned down himself. Colazzo was also shot but survived. Truman was unharmed. Colazzo was convicted of attempted murder and sentenced to death, though Truman later commuted this to life in prison in 1979. President Jimmy Carter further commuted Colazzo's sentence to time served. A plot to assassinate President Richard Nixon in Ottawa, Canada, was uncovered in 1972 after Milwaukee-born Arthur Bremer was identified as the would-be assassin. But only after he shot and wounded another high-profile American politician, Nixon is pictured with Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau. Bremer had planned to attack Nixon as the president's motorcade drove past him, but Nixon's car was traveling too fast for him to get a good shot. A few weeks later, he instead shot and seriously injured the governor of Alabama, George Wallace, leaving him paralyzed for the rest of his life. Bremer served 35 years in prison for the shooting of Governor Wallace. Nixon's successor, Gerald Ford, survived to attempts on his life in as many weeks. On September 5, 1975, the president was in Sacramento on the grounds of the California State Capitol when he reached out to shake the hand of a woman in the crowd. The woman drew a handgun and pulled the trigger, but the chamber was empty. Ford was immediately surrounded by a throng of Secret Service men and bundled out of harm's way. The would-be assassin was Lynette Squeaky Fromm, shown here leaving the courthouse. After her first hearing on the charge of attempting to assassinate the president, Fromm, a follower of Charles Manson, served 30 for years in prison for her crime. 17 days later, President Ford was in San Francisco. As Ford was leaving the city's St. Francis Hotel, he waved to the crowd at the same time. A single gunshot echoed off the surrounding buildings. Ford's would-be assassin on this occasion was another woman, Sarah Jane Moore, as she aimed towards Ford. A bystander grabbed her arm and the shot missed its target. Moore was given a life sentence for the assassination attempt and served 32 years behind bars before being released on parole. Jimmy Carter, the 39th President of the United States, was the target of what the authorities believed was an assassination plot. On May 5, 1979, an individual named Raymond Lee Harvey was arrested by Secret Service agents after being found carrying a starter pistol with blank rounds shortly before Carter was to give a speech at the Civic Center Mall in Los Angeles. Harvey had a history of mental illness, but police were compelled to investigate further after he claimed to be part of a four-man operation to assassinate the president at the mall. Harvey and another man, an illegal Mexican alien who gave the name Osvaldo Espinoza Ortiz, were arrested but later released due to lack of evidence. The names Lee Harvey and Osvaldo. Osvaldo is the Spanish equivalent to Oswald led conspiracy theorists to draw comparisons to Lee Harvey Oswald. The March 30, 1981 shooting of Ronald Reagan is the nearest anyone has gotten to claiming the life of a sitting U.S. President since the assassination of President John F. Kennedy in 1963. Reagan was leaving the Washington Hilton Hotel when his attacker struck. The would-be assassin was later identified as John Hinckley Jr. Hinckley fired six shots towards the president, striking him and three others. After his arrest, Hinckley said he had wanted to kill Reagan to impress actress Jodie Foster 
Though seriously wounded, Reagan recovered quickly. His shooter, meanwhile, served 35 years in jail before being released from institutional psychiatric care in 2016. While Ronald Reagan was very fortunate, to have survived the assassination attempt on him for other U.S. presidents weren't so lucky. Abraham Lincoln has the dubious honor of being the first chief executive of the federal government to be killed by an assassin. He was shot and mortally wounded on April 14, 1865. He died the following day. Lincoln's killer was John Wilkes Booth. His shooting of the president was part of a larger eight-man conspiracy to revive the Confederate cause. Booth was eventually tracked down and killed. Of the eight conspirators later convicted, four were quickly hanged. James A. Garfield, the 20th President of the United States, survived being shot for 11 weeks before succumbing to his wounds. The assassin struck on July 2, 1881 at the Baltimore and Potomac Railroad Station in Washington, D.C., less than four months after Garfield had taken office. Garfield's killer was Charles J. Guiteau, an delusional American who felt aggrieved for not having been recognized by the administration. With a consulship based either in Paris or Vienna, his frustration boiled over into murderous intent. Guido was sentenced to death for the crime and was hanged five months later. The assassination of William McKinley took place on September 6, 1901, at the Temple of Music in Buffalo, New York. The 25th President of the United States was attending the Pan American Exposition when a man stepped out of the crowd and shot him twice in the abdomen. Mortally wounded, McKinley died eight days later. McKinley's assassin was American laborer and anarchist Lee on Chol Ghosh. At his trial, the gunman pleaded insanity, but was nonetheless found guilty of murder. Chol Ghosh's last words before his execution were, I shot the president because I thought it would help the working people and for the sake of the common people. I am not sorry for my crime. The most infamous assassination of an American president took place on November 22, 1963, in Dallas, Texas. President John F. Kennedy was shot once in the back, the bullet exiting via his throat and once in the head. He died shortly after arriving at the city's Parkland Memorial Hospital. One day after Kennedy's death, Lee Harvey Oswald, the man accused of carrying out the assassination, was himself shot and killed. Gunned owned by Jack Ruby, Harvey remains the man most likely to have murdered Kennedy, though conspiracy theorists to this day claim he was just one man in a much wider plot to kill the president.